Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at what I believe is one of the most underrated distributions out there, Manjaro XFCE. When you look at Manjaro, you always think of the KDE or the GNOME version, but XFCE is one of the primary versions that they have, and I just don't think it gets the accolades that it deserves. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Like, subscribe, or follow my channel. doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like what the channel's doing and you enjoy the videos, you can support us by buying us a cup of coffee, or even better, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Manjaro's website. It's manjaro.org. I will make sure to include that below in the description. And when you come here, you've got some options. You've got Try Manjaro, Learn More, Get Your Manjaro Shell. If you go over to Download, it gives you the option to download XFCE, Plasma, and Gnome. We hear a lot about Gnome and KDE. We just don't hear a lot about the XFCE. This is the newest version, 21.1.6. So this is where you would come to download it. Up here, you've also got additions. If you would like to take a look at the Community Edition, you've got Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepin, i3, Mate, and Sway. You've also got Features, Donate, Shop, News, and More. Under More, you've got Lists, Security, General, Packages, First Steps, Common Problems, User Guide. Don't forget the Forum if you do want to download this and give it a test drive. If you have issues, you can always zip over here to the forum and get your questions answered. Then you've got Mirrors, Discover Software, Branch, Compare, Team, Sponsors, Partners, and Linux. So what we're going to go ahead and do is close out of their website right now. And if you download Manjaro XFCE, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're going to be met with. You get a nice welcome window, and it lets you know this is Manjaro Hello, Pavo 21.1.6. Down here, you've got some shortcuts that take you to the README for the documentation, release info, the wiki, and then, of course, the forum we were just speaking of under support, discover software, mailing list, launch the installer, and then on project, you can get involved. You can become a part of the development team if you want to. Just send them a message. Let them know what you can do and how you can help the project. And, of course, if you enjoy what they're doing with the project, you can always donate. Now, the welcome screen will continue to start and come up every time you reboot your system, unless you click it off down here. But don't fear, if you close out of that and it doesn't come back up during a reboot, just come back over here, put in Manjaro Hello, and you can always pull that back up and you can have those shortcuts right there when you need them. So let's go ahead and close out of that. It is XFCE, so the first thing we're going to do is right-click on the desktop. You've got Create Launcher, Create URL Link, Create Folder, Create Document. You've got your Terminal. I'm going to go ahead and open up the terminal. I want to see if they have HTOP installed out of the box, and they do. At present, we are using approximately 992 megabytes of the 2 gigabytes of RAM that I have issued. So it's a little bit heavier than some of the distributions I've been looking at, but it's still under a gig. So it's mid-weight. It's not necessarily what you would call lightweight. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Close. And right-click again, and then you've got Thunar Root, Search, Open a New Window. Arrange desktop icons, desktop settings, and then, of course, your applications. It comes with one panel. It's located on the bottom, of course. You've got power on. You've got date and time. Sound, internet, update manager, notifications, and then show desktop. And then, of course, you've got your two workspaces right here. If you would like to make adjustments to your panel, all you got to do is right-click on the panel, and it will bring up properties. Just click on properties. Right now, you've got style is transparent. You could change that. If you wanted to, separate or handle, dots, but I'm going to leave it as transparent. And then if you go back down and right-click as well, you've got panel, panel preferences, log out, help, and about. Let's go ahead and go to panel preferences. Right here, you can make some changes if you would like. Of course, the panel's already locked. If you wanted to make the row size bigger on the panel, all you'd have to do is come over here and click. And as you can see, the panel starts getting bigger. And then, of course, you could adjust the number of rows. Right now, it's one. If you set that to two, when you opened up another application, it would actually show two boxes right here for those applications. Then you can check on appearance. Right now, it doesn't have dark mode enabled. If you wanted to, you could turn dark mode on. And as you can see, it switches everything over to a dark mode. I'm going to leave that there right now. Icons, you can adjust size automatically. It is presently off. You could turn that on, and it would automatically adjust your icon sizes as you scale things on your screen. And then you could come up to items. This is what you have down here. You've got the whisker menu, window button, separator, clock, pulse audio plug-in. Now, if you wanted to add, you could scroll down through this list of things that you would want to add. Just click on it. 
then you'd come over here to add and it would add it over here in the panel. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Come over to the left side of the panel. You have the Manjaro applications menu. Let's go ahead and click on that. And of course you got terminal emulator. Then you've got file manager. Let's go ahead and take a look at their file manager. And as you can tell, this is Thunar. Let's go ahead and make it a little bigger. I like Thunar for the simple fact that it is a nice clean looking and doesn't get in your way type of file manager. You've got your usual suspects over here. You've got your regular home folders right here. And of course you have the menu up here, file, edit, view, go, help. Let's see about Thunar. And it is Thunar 4.16.10, so it's the most up-to-date Thunar that you can get. But that is pretty much your file manager. Quick, easy, stays out of your way so you can get work done. Back down to the app menu. You've got your web browser and then of course your mail reader. So if you come over here, you've got favorites, recently used, all applications, then accessories. On accessories, you've got application finder, catfish file, calculator, Manjaro user guide, menu editor, screenshot, task manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And this right here just shows you the basic tasks that you're running at the present. Your CPU is using about 13%. Processes, you have 172 processes going, and then you can scroll down through and see what processes you've got going on at the present. If you wanted to end one, you just right click on it and you could kill it or stop it however you wanted to do that. So that is your task manager. Back down to the app menu, you've got Steam installed out of the box, graphics, you've got G Color, GIMP, View Noir, you've got Firefox, Hex Chat, and Thunderbird for your mail, multimedia, Audacious. Pulse Audio, VLC, XF Burn, and then on Office, instead of LibreOffice, you have Only Office installed out of the box. Let's go ahead and take a peek at that real quick. And Only Office is a free software suite. Now, it does have a paid version. If you want to create an Only Office Cloud account to where you can sync everything to the cloud, there is a cost. But if you just want a Office suite that is local and you can do all of your work directly on your PC, and then if you want to store things on your own cloud, it is absolutely free. Now, one of the first things I like to do here is go to settings, and I like to go ahead and change it a little bit. I like to go make it a little bigger, so I'm going to bump that to 150, and then I'm going to change the interface to dark, and then I'm going to apply, and it makes everything a little easier to see. For me, if you like it smaller the way it was looking, you can leave it there, and then you can go over and you can start taking a peek at what it offers. And as you can see, once it loads up, it has a very familiar feel to it. If you're used to working in something like a Microsoft Office type environment, everything's a little bigger. You can see all your icons are easier to see, but you've got document, spreadsheet, and presentation. So basically, you have a placement for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. If you haven't ever used OnlyOffice, I suggest downloading it and giving it a shot. I still recommend LibreOffice, though, for the simple fact that it is 100% free and open source, but if you're somebody that wants a more familiar type feel or familiar type layout, take a look at OnlyOffice. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down to the application menu. Other, you've got HP UI scan, so you can set up your printers. And then settings, so click on settings. You've got about me, add and remove software. Let's take a peek at that. Now, if you do download this and you decide to go ahead and use it as your daily driver, there's gonna be a few things you need to do on the add and remove software before you do anything. What you're gonna to wanna to do is come over here where those three dots are, click on that, go down to preferences, go over to third party, zip down here and you can enable AUR support and then you also want to enable check for updates. Then you want to go back to general. Once you go over to general, it'll say right here, use mirrors from worldwide. I had a comment a couple of weeks ago on a video that I did and they said, are we supposed to use worldwide or use the mirror that is closest to us? I always use worldwide. It seems to go faster for me and it makes updating and downloading things a lot quicker. So once you make sure that's on worldwide, you want to click right here where it says refresh mirrors. This will take approximately two to four minutes to refresh. Once those mirrors are refreshed, you know now that when you download something or you do updates, you're going to be getting it from the quickest possible links that are available. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then over here, you've got categories, you've got groups, repositories. You can come over here and do photo and video, or you can come up here and just do a search for the application or software that you're looking for. Once it looks it up and finds it, all you got to do is go in and install it. So that's how you would install software on Manjaro XFCE. So let's close out of that and then go back down to the app menu. We had settings. You got Bluetooth, color profiles, default applications, menu editor, notifications, panel, power management, settings manager. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And once you open your settings manager, you've got about me, appearance, desktop, file manager settings, notifications, pulse audio control, add and remove software, which we just looked at. You can set up your firewall if you want to, Manjaro notifier, session and startup, settings editor, Bluetooth adapters, and then back down to the app menu, and then system. And then it's got a lot of settings over here for the system. What I didn't see was a way to change the background. So we'll go to desktop settings, wallpaper for my desktop. It's loading up some new ones right here. I do like the one that it comes with out of the box. But you can go over here. You can find some awesome looking backgrounds, especially with Manjaro. They always have some good looking ones, something like that. If you open that up. That is a very good looking background. Let's close out of that. I think I'll leave that up there. That looks pretty good. Then back over to the app menu, and I do believe we have looked at everything. That was a real quick look at Manjaro XFCE 21.1.6 Pavo. Like I said, it's mid-weight. It's not the lightest that you're going to be able to get out there, but it's not the heaviest either. So if you do have older hardware and you would like to give it a shot, you can throw it on there. It's not going to run as fast as something like Sparky Linux, you know, something like that that's going to be, you know, four or 500 megabyte range at rest. But it's still only a gig. Throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, give it a test drive. See what you think about it. If you do that, let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like what the channel is doing and you enjoy the videos, buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.